Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 13, and I'm going to discuss the curl of a vector, in this case, A. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the previous videos which are relevant to this are, number 3, I discussed the cross product, which I'll be using here. In numbers 6 and 11, I discussed the NABLA operator, and in number 12, I discussed the divergence. So I'm going to continue this in the same fashion as I've done the last few videos by a bit of revision. So if we have a vector, let's say a, we can do three things with it. We can operate on it. We can, excuse me, multiply it by a scalar, and there's only one way we can do that. Or we can multiply it by a vector. There are two ways of doing that. We can take the dot or the cross product. But the dot and the cross product each have a different name or an, an alternate name, which uh, Im implies what quantity you get back after you do, do the multiplication. So when you multiply a vector by a scalar, you get back a vector. But the dot product is known as the scalar product. So when you multiply a vector by another vector, you, using the dot product, you get back a scalar. And if you multiply a vector by another vector, using the cross product, you get back a vector. Something we've seen in the past. So, as I've discussed in the past as well, the NABLA is not just a vector, it's a vector operator. So it doesn't do these exact three. It does something similar, but not those exact three. So it can do three operations. It can operate on a scalar, or it can operate on a vector. And once again, it can operate on a vector in one of two ways. So it can operate using the dot product, or the cross product. So, if you take the dot product between your NABLA operator and your vector, you do, uh, you're, you're going to get a scalar back. If you take the cross product between your NABLA operator and a vector, you're going to get back a vector. And if you take the, if you just operate your NABLA on a scalar, you'll get back a vector. So in the same fashion, we get vector, scalar, vector, vector, scalar, vector. And we call each of these three operations something different. We call the first one the gradient, the second one the divergence, and the final one, which I'm going to discuss now, we call the curl. And we'll see for more. We'll see later on why that is the case. So, let's say we have the Nabla operator. Well, that's going to be del del x i hat del plus del del y j hat plus del del z in the k hat direction. And A has three components. It's going to be A sub x in the i hat direction, plus A sub y in the j hat direction, plus A sub z in the k hat direction. So you want to take the cross product between the two of these. Note the order, by the way. So this will be coming first, and this will be coming second. So it's very simple. We write our components down, namely in this case, i hat, j hat, and k hat. Then we write down our first vector, so the component in the i hat direction is del del x, the component in the j hat direction is del del y, and the component in the k hat direction is del del z. And then we, write, we write down the second one, which is going to be a sub x in the i hat, a sub y in the j hat, and a sub z in the k hat direction. And for reasons I haven't proven, but I, I just, you know, I just implied from, vector, from linear algebra, to get the cross product to you, you take the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. And I'm not going to discuss how to do it. Look at my video, video number 3, if you want to discuss cross products. But I'm just going to, I'm going to do it here nonetheless. So that means the following. It means that if we take the curl of our vector A, giving us back a vector, of course, we're going to get the following. We're going to get del, del y of A sub z minus del, del z of A sub y in the i hat direction minus del del x a sub z minus del del z of a sub x in the j hat direction plus uh, del del x in the a sub y direction sorry in uh, of a sub y excuse me I, sh I, sh I said that a couple of times now which is incorrect and I'm going to take away from it del del y of a sub x and this is in the k hat direction. Note, of course, we have three components, meaning we have a vector. So just, well, look, I'm not going to, just just for 
completeness, I suppose you could say. Another way of writing this is this del a sub z del y like that. Or what you might say, sometimes you might have del a, del y, and holding z fixed. You might have something like that. There are different ways of writing the same thing. It doesn't really matter what way you write them, provided you're consistent. However, sometimes if you're looking at other people's notes, you, you need to work out exactly how they're, have, how they're using their notation. So the curl of a vector field is pretty straightforward to calculate. But it's not just in the calculations. That's, that's not the only reason we're interested in it. Similar to the divergence, we're interested in it for its geometric properties. You can imagine, of course, it's, it's, it's given its name for a particular reason. And the reason it's given its name is because it measures the tendency of your vector field to curl around something. So if you can imagine that this is our this is our rectangular space, so this is the x-axis, this might be the y-axis, and this might be the z. Note, of course, I haven't extended to neg negative z. If my function a has positive curl, then it is tending to curl, it's tending to curl around a particular point. So I plug in my point uh, into the into my value of my curl, and we see whether or not it's it's uh, we see whether or not the um, the curl is positive. Now I'm going to tell you an example straight away of something which does have positive curl. If you can imagine a let's say a wire, a current carrying wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it so it's facing right up towards you, which means we're just looking at let's say that 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 is my uh, this is my wire. So this my this is my wire which carries a current I. Now if you get a Boy Scout compass very simply and you, you plot it the whole way along the wire which by the way extends you know it extends backwards you plot it and you look at the magnetic field you'll find that the magnetic field does the following pretty much so we see that the magnetic field is rotating or not rotating on it's curling around my uh, my current carrying wire so we'll say that the curl of our magnetic field is non-zero. Okay? The curl of our magnetic field is non-zero. And I can tell you that the curl of a, a, a static electric field is zero. But that's a static electric field. It isn't the case for a, a, an electrodynamic field or electrodynamics. But so there are examples of um, there are examples of fields or vector fields which have one has a zero curl and one has a non-zero curl. So it's a useful geometric quantity to analyze. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicusorials.com.